sequel. Hit me up. Hi, this is John Raptus from Raptusoft. Have a nice day, Ethan. I got an email from John Raptus himself. I could not retrieve the original email, but what I could obtain was an email I sent while I was first researching his work. A member of his product and support team called Kevin. My name will be forever engraved in the credits as a beta tester. In 14 more years, when Chuzzle 3 comes out on VR, I'll be sure to download it. <laughs> Chuzzle is a beloved series. It's been that way for almost two decades. Until recently. The first Chuzzle released in 2005, a cult classic. A fun, colorful game with many modes to choose from. The second Chuzzle, a fresh reimagining of the original Chuzzle world. Adding new modes, updated creatures, added a map to traverse, introduced the Chuzarium, and integrated new rooms to increase the diversity of enjoyment. The third Chuzzle? is called Chuzzle Snap. Not too long ago, a person by the name of Deleted Videos was the first gateway to Chuzzle Snap. This access from a second installment can lead one to the Google Play Store, where one can download the early access with no problem whatsoever. Curious as to why one didn't know another installment was established, and pondering why the third was published so early, this can lead one down a rabbit hole of questions, specifically unanswered questions. A never-ending hole where one isn't alone in any regard. Nevertheless, this cannot happen until one experiences the game firsthand. Doing so reveals a plethora of details yet is underwhelming. The initial menu looks similar to Chuzzle 2, so much so that it's literally a color-swapped version of the main menu from Chuzzle 2, except for the word snap being placed in the center instead of 2 being placed on the far right. Gameplay-wise, it uses the exact same assets as Chuzzle 2, except now you can snap them together to match the Chuzzles instead of shifting them. So instead of the chuzzles falling down, they jam in place. When jammed in place, one can't move again, making one cautious as to where one should place the specific pattern. As well as this, you're unable to rotate the clusters of chuzzles, which makes it difficult once you already have a lot of patterns already on the board, and adds to the challenge. But once you can't place them anymore, the game is over. After gameplay, you click the presence to see your updated high score. This new addition is a fun little quirk that only occurs when there's an actual change in your score if it appears to be higher than it previously was. If one does not get a higher score, then one will not receive the present. If one explores further, one will slowly realize that the UI for Chuzzle Snap is literally the same UI as Chuzzle 2. One may think that this is because they are both mobile games, so obviously they would use the same UI. Which means that they would share certainly some UI similarities. Or maybe all of them. Comparing both games side by side leads one to believe, especially considering the contents of the Chazarium, they're the same. In the Chazarium, there is no difference in the main menu of the shop, besides the Get Chuzzles tab. Browsing the food in Chuzzle Snap, one can see a Boring Bowl, Kissy Bowl, Hunger Bowl, Cupcake, and Macarons. Or are they macaroons? I don't really know and I don't really care. Relating to the food in Chuzzle 2, Boring Bowl, Kissy Bowl, Hunger Bowl, Cupcake, and Macaron. Or Macaroon. I don't know. Same with the fun stuff in Chuzzle Snap. Comfy poofs, comfy chair, relax pods, Chuzz balls, exercise wheel, Chuzzle swing, disco ball, lightning, li er, lighting, Rubbery plant, pole light, trinkets, trinket tables, Heidi box, Heidi tube, Heidi fern, chuzzleine, bubble tub, goldfish bowl, chuzzle plushie, flat screen TV, and jail cell. With the fun stuff in chuzzle too. Comfy poofs, comfy chair, relax pods, chuzz balls, exercise wheel, chuzzle swing, disco ball, lighting, rubbery plant, pole light, trinkets, trinket tables, box, Heidi tube, Heidi fern, chuzzleine, bubble tub, goldfish bowl, chuzzle plushie, flat screen TV, and jail cell. Wallpaper and chuzzle snap. Retro red, loopy loops, mod blocks, starling knight, earthly argyle, happy rainbow, autumn overgrown, orange peel, chevron, invaders, padded room, so leafy, wood, rustic, 
Boring green, boring yellow, boring orange, boring blue, and boring purple. Wallpapers and Chuzzle 2. Retro Rad, Loopy Loops, Mod Blocks, Starling Knight, Earthly Argyle, Happy Rainbow, Autumn Overgrown, Orange Peel, Chevron, Invaders, Padded Room, Salifi, Wood, Rustic, Boring Green, Boring Yellow, Boring Orange, Boring Blue, and Boring Purple. <sighs> Get coins and chuzzle snap. Buy coins, which is 150 coins. Buy more coins, which is 400 coins. And watch an ad, which is 5 to 15 coins. Get coins and chuzzle too. Buy coins, which is 150 coins. Buy more coins, which is 400 coins. Or watch an ad, which is 5 or 15 coins. It's literally the same UI in chuzzle snap and chuzzle 2. Then what? are the differences between the two. For starters, gameplay is vastly different, not only in functionality but also in variety. Chuzzle 2 has a lot of game modes while Chuzzle Snap only has one game mode. Chuzzle 2 has a red tinted start screen while Chuzzle Snap has a blue tinted start screen. No difficulty level for Chuzzle Snap, unlike Chuzzle 2's difficulty mode. Chuzzle Snap does not have a puzzle mode. These are seemingly the only differences between the two. Why is the game like this? It's in beta currently, which isn't much, but it's a start. It could be an alternate version of Chuzzle 2, since we've seen similarities to the point where John literally just copy-pasted code between Chuzzle Snap and Chuzzle 2 regarding the UI. Perhaps Snap isn't necessarily Chuzzle 3, but an additional game mode that he couldn't fit in Chuzzle 2, so therefore he made Chuzzle Snap as a standalone project to test out certain gameplay mechanics to test how people would react to it. Chuzzle Snap honestly leaves way more questions than answers, which can spark one's interest to investigate Chuzzle Snap regarding its existence, why certain features don't exist in the game, why there's a new game so soon, why it's not a VR game. Many questions plague at the mind, which can lead one to a fan-made Discord server about Chuzzle created by the person with the username Snackers. This sparked conversation about Chuzzle Snap specifically, specifically due to one's distaste of the third installment, comparatively to the other two. So, uh, Chuzzle Snap is literally just Chuzzle 2 without a map and only one game mode. I guess Rafi might put Snap and Chuzzle 2 for a little bit of spice in the game, you know, for coin. Celestial was proposing a paid game mode in Chuzzle 2, which I honestly don't see considering the fact that there are plenty of game modes already in Chuzzle 2, so adding another would probably be a bit too much. Not only that, but that John doesn't have a bad reputation of these pay-to-win model of games. He'd rather make a game that he's passionate about, simply because because he loves the process and the little details that others see as a waste of time. I think Chuzzle Snap is a bad idea. People think their childhood will remember the original game. I personally wouldn't say it's a bad idea, rather that it was a poorly executed one. It doesn't have that much content for a standalone game, rather it feels like an additional mode that was never added to Chuzzle 1 or 2. Mr. John wanted to make a Snap version out of one of his games years ago, but in his own words, the game got cursed and wouldn't touch it again. I guess this was a short project to get one of his needs off of his chest. Snackers, compared to the others, seems to be talking in a very informed and authoritative position, as if he has connections to Mr. Raptus himself. This is intriguing initially, which can make one gravitate towards him for further questioning. There are no mentions of a chuzzle game in the forums, only Boonka, Snap. Snackers is right. If you search Chuzzle Snap into the Raptosoft forums, you won't see anything from John. Yet Snackers was talking as if John made the announcement already. In fact, Snackers is actually very active in the forums. Just like how Chuzzle has been an active topic ever since Chuzzle Snap was in early access. The real question is, if Snackers knows this information, why isn't it public on the forums? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Curse? W where did John mention this? Snackers had a connection with John? Maybe. See, now I'm interested in this lore. It all makes sense. By curse here, he meant it didn't do well financially. It was a good game, likely getting at Chuzzle's place, but I guess no one really bought it. John mentioned this in the forums, and I think I remember his wife not letting him touch it again for some reason. Wait. If Snackers knows this info, and it's not available on the forums, then either John deleted it, or 
Snackers has a personal connection with John, which can lead us to so many different answers to all the questions we have. No, I don't have any connection with John. We never got into contact. Oh. Then that means John must have deleted any mention of Chuzzle Snap from the forums. The most recent update from John on the forum is from January of 2019, over a year and a half ago. The only leads are and I quote, added content update to Chuzzle 2 between date redacted, adding another game type and another puzzle with a link to a discussion page about a cre- cre Christmas? No, pre-Christmas update, with this post being made on December of 2018. If this was hinting at Chuzzle Snap, who's to say? That was two years ago. John hasn't logged into the forum since April of last year. Snackers knows this info directly because it's literally labeled on the website. Using third-party info, while it's useful to a degree, not all of the questions have been answered. The one question that's still at the forefront now is why would John delete the original post about Chuzzle Snap? It's time to go to the source. Obtaining the email I used last time to get into contact with John, I sent him Hey John, it's me, Ethan, the guy who made the videos about Chuzzle 1 and 2. I played Chuzzle Snap and was wondering if you would be up for a call to interview about the game. I do have a few questions regarding it because I'm planning on making a video about Chuzzle Snap and wanted to know your thoughts on a few things. Six hours later, good old Kevin hit my line back. Ethan, would you be okay with a written interview? John's internet is really bad, and he wouldn't be able to do a video interview. Absolutely, that's no problem whatsoever. Okay, why don't you send the questions that you would like to ask John to me here at this email. Then I will get them in front of John. Sounds great. Hey John, I have some questions for you about Chuzzle Snap. If you do not feel comfortable with answering a certain question, just let me know. What's your background in game development? What compelled you to make Chuzzle Snap? Why does Chuzzle Snap only have one game mode? Why does Chuzzle Snap have a Chazarium? Why is the UI designed literally from Chuzzle 2? Are you planning on putting Snap in Chuzzle 2? Why are there no mentions of Chuzzle Snap in the forums from you? Did you delete the Snap form? If so, why? Some people think that your wife wouldn't let you touch the game again. Is this statement true? If you don't mind me asking, why is that? Some people also believe that you haven't logged into the forums since April of last year. Is this true, and if so, why? Is Chuzzle Snap a dead project? Thank you for your time, Ethan. Okay, Ethan, I'll forward them along to John. Thank you. And now, we wait. Oh, hi. Sorry it took me so long to get these answers to you. Oh, it it's no problem, really. In my latest Chuzzle 2 update, there was some kind of issue with the update process. Game crashing and not even my fault. It took me a week to figure out what was going on. Much hair pulling. Everything else got put on the back burner. Well, it looks like everything is cooled off now, so let's get to it. Sounds like a plan. If you're going to play my answers in video, I would appreciate if you could find an Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonator to read my parts. You can hire them online. <laughs> I hate to inform you, but I really don't have the Patreon budget for that. I've tried to write the answers so they will read appropriately. I'll PayPal you half of the cost of the impersonator. Maybe some other time. Anyways, you ready? Let's do this. What is your background in game development? I started out indie and wrote a game called Egg Sucker in my spare time. Google it if you dare. Wait, hold up. Time out. I actually remember this game. What in the world? He made this game? Oh, that's so cool. I didn't know you made this, dude. Oh, Raptosoft. Dang. All right, cool. I played this game. What in the world, dude? Oh, this is really cool. I love this game. PopGap Games saw it and hired me on to pump it into dynamite. I worked for them for a few years, but they couldn't contain their animal urges. They began to do things like focus groups and Friday meetings. This chafed, so I went out on my own with agreements to give them first refusal on some number of new games I wrote. Chuzzle was the first of those. 
What compelled you to make Chuzzle Snap? I was working at Hamster Ball 2 when this COVID stuff just shut me down completely. I got stuck on refreshing COVID-19 count web pages and I needed to do something to snap myself out of it. My wife was playing a little neat block game where you had to make lines all the way across to clear them and I asked if she thought the same concept would work with vanilla group 3 matching. She gave a strong commitment. Maybe? And I threw basically the whole game together in four hours, then had it chuzzlefied by the end of the week. She couldn't stop playing it, so I said, Okay, I'll take a little break from Hamster Ball and kick this out, because whenever you went to a COVID-19 page and it was down, that was from my single-handed manual DOS attack. By the way, I saw recently that someone had beat me to the punch with the Place Peace Match 3 concept with some extremely creative names like Fun Color Blocks Fun Match or something. It's a completely no-frills, bare-bones game, and I'm annoyed with my industry. Which used to be the most creative place on the planet. Now it seems to be dominated by cynical, low-energy money grabs. Honestly, yeah. Mobile games have a bad reputation, and they've been kind of declining over the years, for sure. To see your annoyance is actually... is a, it's, it's quite fascinating, I'm not gonna lie. And speaking of mobile games, specifically, why does... Chuzzle Snap only have one game mode. It was intended to be a super quick project. I've told people that my next game is going to be Hamster Ball 2, and that there's going to be an outrage on my forums when this game appears, so I didn't want to take too much time on it. I'm still in Hamster Ball 2, but basically flipped over to Snap whenever I had a block. Hamster Ball 2 is like 75% a 3D editor, so it's been very grueling work. Lots of math. LOTS of math. I need a sanity break at times. Why does Chuzzle Snap have the Chazarium? It was intended to be a super quick project, but turns out I just don't work that way. I can relate to that feeling, yeah, for I sure. I just felt like people would want something more than just some little match game that every studio in China would clone in 12 hours if it was a success. <laughs> Fair, yeah. The mobile game industry does have a lot of clones, specifically. I can think of probably five at the top of my head. Some, even with similar UI experiences, which, regarding that, why is the UI design literally from Chuzzle 2? If I ever do more Chuzzle games, they will follow this theme with a different color dominant. Are you planning on putting Snap in Chuzzle 2? I spent a lot of time waffling on whether to do this instead. I was going to make it a sort of counterbalance to the Mindbender game, but the more I thought about it, the more I didn't want to mix game mechanics that much. I believe in games all being their own game, so I didn't want to go down some weird rabbit hole of filling Chuzzle 2 with bizarre variations that people would either hate or like so much that the regular games became a pain. So Chuzzle 2 will be about sliding and Chuzzle Snap will be about snapping pieces into place and Chuzzle Boom will be about exploding. Wait, did you just confirm I'm that- I'm all kidding, there's no Chuzzle Boom. Why are there no mentions of Chuzzle Snap in the form from you? The people waiting on Hamster Ball 2 will find out where I live and stand by my driveway with pitchforks and torches. <laughs> the entire thing will appear on Life Week. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. I'm aware how dedicated the Raptosoft community is. I also try to stay incommunicado because, one, I picked up a stalker or two, so Dork Lord on the forum is the official voice of Raptosoft. He thinks stalkers are cool and I talk to him every day. Oh. Well, that's concerning. Because I can't tell if you're joking or not. But continue. Two, I'm reaching that age where computer game developer just isn't good anymore, and I think I have limited years left. If I don't get Hamster Ball 2 and Solomon's Keep Ultimate Metal Edition now before I die, I will face the wrath of my players in the afterlife. <laughs> Trust me, I have the same feeling about a few projects of my own that will remain nameless. I have very enthusiastic, satisfying, and more importantly, very long conversations with people on my forum, which is almost always more fun than coding. And, well, dope's gonna dopamine. I will talk to everyone after I have honored the two commitments above. Until I honor those, I'm actually avoiding all forms of recreation that don't involve my family. Oh wow, that's like, really good dedication. I'm proud of you. Did you delete the chisel snap form? If so... Why? I haven't added it yet. See previous answer. Well, 
Also, I hate my forum software and I have this new custom forum like half done that I want to migrate to. It lets you log in with your Maker Mall ID and lots of other helpful features like viewing your level's play count online and such. So whenever I use existing forums, I'm reminded of my failures to complete the new ones yet. Ooh, that'd be a really cool feature. I know for me personally, I would probably use the form way more if it had that capability. Some people think your wife wouldn't let you touch the game again. If you don't mind me asking, why is that? If it's true. Oh no, she very enthusiastically thinks that I should be making everything from a chuzzle version of Angry Birds to a chuzzle version of Solomon's Keep to a chuzzle version of Animal Crossing. <laughs> If she had her way, every game I did for the rest of my life would have the word chuzzle in the title somewhere. Gosh, that's really adorable. I love that. That's really funny. There would probably be a hidden chuzzle easter egg in all non-chuzzle games I ever do. Just as a hat tip to her. Some people also think that you haven't logged into the forum since April of last year. Is this true? And if so, why? I... Change the password to something easier to remember, and you need to reset because it's more secure than intended. I haven't bothered yet since I don't intend to post personally until I have honored my commitments. I read, though. And Dork Lord especially brings immediately to my attention any problems. He's also keeping a list of game suggestions and whatnot and holds them for me. Like, when I finish Hamster Ball and get back on Solomon's Keep, he's gonna hand me a big document of his ideas and requests. I'm happy that you found somebody to help you out with the forums. That must be really handy. Also, we've just recently had some issues with players making trouble on the Hoggy and Robot Wants Kitty level sharing. So I had to take some time out to handle that. Come on, guys. Be cool to each other so the developer can work on the new stuff instead of rewriting the swear filter. Yes. Yes, exactly. Games take a long time and indie games take way longer. And when you constantly have to fix your last game... It's hard to work on a new project. Yeah, I, I totally understand. Is Chuzzle Snap a dead project? No, it's almost done. Like I said, I've been working on Hamster Ball and hitting Snap when I run into a mental block, so it's been a bit slow. But I'm about to throw a simple tutorial and daily do into it, and then I'll beta and launch. Depending on the beta stability, it could be launched by Beta Adapter to prevent Universal Reboot. To explain the last part, any time I give a launch date, the universe is swapped out with the universe exactly identical to the original in all ways except I missed the date. In some sort of divine punishment because of the things I did in grade school. Well, thank you so incredibly much for taking time to answer all of my questions in Great detail, Mr. Raptus. From what we know, it looks like Chuzzle Snap is still going to get some updates, and hopefully some new features, which will hopefully impact the overall quality of the game experience for the better. Now we know that Chuzzle Snap was a way for John to help himself mentally by working on a new project when he was already deep in the trenches on his main project. That he's not the happiest with the other developers in his industry. That John kept quiet about Chuzzle Snap to ensure that he didn't forget a more important project that was already announced. He knew that his community would bash him if he released another game instead of the main one that he was working on. That he always wants to further improve his craft, especially by adding the Chazarian. That John didn't want to mess with the core mechanics of Chuzzle 2. That he's aware of how dedicated of a community he has. That John's inactivity in the forms is due to the commitment he's making both with his games and with his family, and that he's partially ashamed by the current technical state of his forum. That John's wife is actually incredibly supportive, unlike how Snackers painted the situation earlier. That he's found someone to help him with the forum when he's absent, and that he's using Chuzzle Snap as a way to take a mental break from Hamster Ball 2 due to how math intensive Hamster Ball 2 is. Looking at Chuzzle Snap with fresh eyes and new first party information, it makes sense why this current game feels underwhelming. It was meant to be a fast project that wasn't supposed to take a lot of time due to the demand of other games, and was a passion project overall to help him with Hamster Ball 2. The UI feels the same because it is the same. John even admitted that he wants to keep this style going forward with Chuzzle if he so chooses, except with different color variations. If Chuzzle 1 is the foundation of the mechanics, and Chuzzle 2 are the surfaces of development, then Chuzzle 3 
is the decoration of enhancement. Chuzzle 1 brought everyone together. It gave everybody a wholesome game. Regarding the second, John completely redesigned everything from scratch due to the improvement of quality and to make the game more accessible since smart devices are the new norm. The third, takes what was already developed and tweaks it ever so slightly with its color and functionality, but also isolates the different game mode to separate it from its predecessor, giving John room to test new functionalities. Mental breaks are important. And while John ever so needed one, he still chooses to be dedicated and passionate about his creativity. Rather than calling a day early, he shifted his attention to be productive on another project, which led to the development of Chuzzle 3. While it is always important to have a balance of both work and rest, one should be honored for sticking to commitments. It shows how motivated people can be. How even when one has the opportunity to rest more, they rather work and achieve more. And that's a very commendable trait to have, one that should be acknowledged when one sees it in someone else.